Folks, I know you enjoyed the Cook With Me show, so come bake with me. I'm doing an Easter special, my very own take on my very own cake. Pineapple coconut mile high cake for Easter. Right here on my take on Home and Garden. Hey, thanks everybody for coming by. I knew you'd want to check it out. Now I'm doing a three layer pineapple coconut cake. You gotta get out of the chair for this one. Let's see what we're gonna do today. Alrighty, first thing I wanna do is take a basic white cake mix, real reasonable. And I think what makes it reasonable is there's almost nothing in it. Now you could take your flour. We don't need boxes. People think we need boxes to read. And we're gonna take that basic box mix, white cake, put it in the big mixing bowl. Now, you cooks out there, you know yourself. If you're not using a box, doing everything from scratch, the only difference would be you're gonna take your flour and you're gonna add your baking soda and baking powder. That's probably about all that's in here. Real reasonable price though, for your basic white cake anyway. It's like a buck a box. Now this particular cake mix takes six eggs. That's three each box. Okay, so we'll get them in there. I figured this wouldn't be too boring because it's fun to crack some eggs. Okay, so we got six eggs in there and the box calls for one cup of water for each box. Now I'm gonna do a cup of milk and a cup of water, probably more milk. So I used mostly milk in there because I want a nice rich batter. Then a cup of oil. I'm going just under, you know, under a cup. Let's see what we got with our mixer. Put it on low. Now this said mix it for two minutes and I'm gonna pause and get that done. Alrighty guys, now I have two packages of sweetened coconut. I'm putting one in the batter. Now for you whiners out there that wanna say you don't like coconut, I wanna tell you, you need the fiber and it is wonderful and good for you too. <laughs> Let's get that blended in. I'm gonna open my can of pineapple. Now, I wanna mention a couple things. I want that pineapple juice in the batter. I'm gonna see how much they actually have in here. Okay. Because there might be a ton. You know, it might be too much. That's actually not bad. I'm gonna put all of it in. Okay, just wanna be safe. Now you could go with crushed pineapple, I wanna tell you, and put that in the batter too. But I want something a little fancier, and I'm gonna put the sliced pineapple around in between my layers, okay? So two different ways to go there. We're gonna get this mix nice and catch up. 
Now we've finished mixing that batter and we're gonna come over here to our stove, which I have on already preheated, 350. And I'm gonna take what I think is the only thing to use, the Crisco all vegetable shortening. All you cuties out there that are used to it, there might be other brand names, but I'll tell you, this is the winner. Now I've taken some wax paper and folded it up to make a little squeegee. And I'm gonna, of course, grease my three pans here real quick. Get your partner out of the chair. Now you can help. Oh. <laughs> they might be calling me names now. But you know, it can be fun to bake together. Now if Angela wasn't editing a video, <laughs> she might be down here. We do cakes and cookies and things together, like especially at the holiday. There's my wonderful three greased pans. We'll check it out. Try to go for halfway to begin with. Look at how wonderful and robust that batter. And I love a good flexible spatula. I want to try to get them the same. So halfway up the pan. Looking good. And what a shame I might have to lick this spoon. And only one little bit on the counter. <laughs> and we're gonna pop these in the oven, three pans, it, it'll tell you two pans, about 28 minutes. Of course, I'm gonna check it at 20, but I'm, our oven's hot, I'm thinking it's still 28 minutes. It might be even less. So, into the oven you go, and I'm gonna set that timer for 20. Alrighty, 20 minutes. I got 20 minutes to get ready for the rest of the video. <laughs> you guys won't have to wait. Just I have to wait. But guess what I'm doing while I'm waiting? I'm cleaning up. Because I cannot stand a mess. There's no reason to put it off. You know that. You know how I think and talk. And by golly. I can't wait to pull them out of the oven and show you. Okay, so we've tidied up a bit. And now, while we're still baking, I'm ready to do homemade frosting. Yes, you girls out there that think I need a can or a box. No. <laughs> this is old hat. Okay, so I got my powdered confectionery sugar. Got a half cup there. I'm gonna look at what two cups is gonna look at look like for me. Now, what's amazing is how little liquid it takes in there to turn that into frosting, that whole pile. And I wanna take my stick of pre-softened butter, so we're doing a butter cream. Frosting, yes. I'm gonna take my vanilla and I'm going to get about a half a teaspoon here. Doesn't take much. And yes, it's a coconut cake. There's gonna be plenty of coconut and pineapple flavor. Alrighty, next. My corn syrup. These are some of the things that are in the frosting when you wonder why 
Yours doesn't taste like the canned frosting, right? This is just to give it that sticky, creamy, wonderful. I want about three, four tablespoons in there. That's all I'm worried about. Did I save a little pineapple juice? Oh, look at that. Just, just smidgen. I want to smush that butter down. See how that little bit of juice did. Oh yes, oh, this is looking good. Now I got the cake man out there. He's gonna be watching close, I know. I'm gonna be under the gun. And you can see that starting to shape up and look normal. Oh my goodness. Yes, just wonderful. I see a nice consistency there. But with the three layer cake, I'm gonna need a little more. Another half, I think. Okay, that's gonna do it. You know this confectionery sugar is really reasonable. So we're saving a bunch of money by doing it ourselves. We're gonna need some more juice, and if I run out of juice, which I'm gonna, I'll just put a dot of, could be milk, could be water, but I have a stick of butter in there, and that is plenty of grease, so I don't wanna use oil here. Let's see how this does. Get us back on track. All you gotta know is what's compatible with each other to not make a mistake. Now I wanna put it to medium and get a little air in there. See how all of a sudden it's looking like more. Okay, that's a nice amount, I think, for that cake. And I'm looking at just over two minutes left. on the oven timer to check, that's all, just to check to see if that cake is done, because it could need another 10 minutes. I'm sure it's not done, I don't want to overdo it. So I don't know about a cook that walks away from the kitchen while they're cooking. <laughs> and we're gonna give you a break and get that tea or coffee and we'll be right back. So I don't Get frosting on the camera. <laughs> I'll be licking the camera. Okay guys, so I put, I checked the cakes at 20 minutes and I put them in for another five and now I'm convinced they're ready. So let's get them out of there. They're looking awful pretty. And of course I'm putting them on a cooling rack. So they look a little high and puffy in the middle but of course, when they cool down, they're not gonna be quite like that. Really happy with that color. So for you folks keeping track, 25 minutes was perfect in our oven for three layers of cake. Now it's gonna be quite a little bit to get that to cool down so I can frost the cake for you. Okay, guys, at least you didn't have to wait. It's been probably a good hour, and I got these all out of the pan and on the cooling rack, like you saw, so they'd cool quicker. They're really nice and ready to go. You see, they 
shrank down quite a bit. Now normally with a crown top in multiple layers, you would want to cut this round off. Okay, but with this layering effect that I'm doing, I don't believe I'm going to have to cut it. Okay, and one little thing I did while you were gone, getting your coffee, was I made another cup of frosting because I kind of, I didn't want to run out because of what I want to do in the in between. Okay, so we're ready to go. So this is four cups of frosting all together. Now you know, this is my wonderful mom's cake stand from years ago. Honestly, it's about as old as I am. <laughs> so I'm gonna, we won't go there, but we wanna get a band of frosting around the outside. And I put this on a turntable I got last summer. And you can get them for, you know, not too bad. $10, $15 if you don't have one. And you know that's what the pros are doing with a, with a cake. They're using a turntable. Now, I've cut my pineapple rings in half right in the can. Just put the knife in, cut them right in the can, because this is what I want to do with them. And I think I have eight slices, so I got to count here. Eight. It's going to be plenty. Gives me six halves to get all the way around. All righty. Now, I want to flip my next layer. Look at how golden and gorgeous. And you really have something here. You can feel it with that coconut in the frosting or in the uh, cake. There's going to be coconut in the frosting <laughs> real soon. So again, just that outer ring. Don't have to do the whole thing. You can, you know, if you want it. But I want to make sure there's plenty for my outside. Alrighty. And repeat. To get these ingredients, I think you're going to just go wild over this recipe. I'm going to put a little in the middle, that last one, a little glue. <laughs> Here's that last layer, staying together really nice. You see my recipe works. Oh, goodness sake, I'm not going to have to trim. This is the real fun. I want to start on the bottom and do what I and see where I'm at with the frosting. You know those layer gaps are gonna just take a ton to fill that in. Just like I'm building a wall outside in the garden with stone. <laughs> Not much different. Except this one will be completely edible. We hope, right? I keep that spatula clean as much as I can. I want to get my top so I know it's going to be pretty before it's all used up filling them gaps. <laughs> now you see that four cups of frosting on a triple layer cake is definitely required here. And again, love the flexible spatula for this. 
I want to get an even amount of frosting and then I'm going to worry about how my design ends up and looks, you know, for the finished look. Okay, this is telling me what I got left to finish the side. And man, did I need that extra cup. Gonna do like a plaster movement here. Now I don't do this every day or every week, <laughs> but I think we're doing pretty good so far. Now for the real finish, you can't have a coconut cake without plenty of coconut. We're going to sprinkle that. It's going to be incredible. We're going to let that come over the side a bit, even onto the plate a bit. And people will be just happy to get that off. Now, not only is this a Easter cake, but this is an anniversary cake for us too. We just had our anniversary, April 7, <laughs> 20 years, 20 years. Some of you are going, wow, you made it 20 years. And some are going, you're a puppy. We got 30, 40. <laughs> and for dealing with it for 20 years, I am waiting for my trophy. <laughs> it's in the mail, I think. I'm sure Angela's waiting for her trophy too. But because you're so nice, <laughs> we're gonna show you our trophies together that we each got each other an anniversary ring and we'll show you that we're gonna sit down and have a wonderful cup of coffee in the old country roses by Royal Albert cup and saucer and we're gonna have a piece of this cake you know the coffee tastes better in the Royal Albert old country roses is that sweet? Thank you. Sweet. Yes, very. I think it came out pretty good. Pretty fantastic. I don't know. We'll have to taste it. Let me get that plate from you. Oh my goodness. This is like cutting Whoa. a roast. <laughs> it's so dense and nice. Wow. When the kids get home, they're going to... They're going to be excited. They're going to be wanting some too. Yeah, they won't even want to eat supper. No. <laughs> they just want this. What a balancing act. <laughs> the flavor's awesome. You know, I was afraid the pineapple might be a little dominating over the coconut. It's not, is it? No. No, it's perfect. It complements it really nice. You no, know, you can use crushed pineapple and just blend it in the batter. Yeah. You know. I, I think I would probably do that and layer it with the crush. But I wanted to show them this. And by layering it, the pineapple around the outside, you don't have to cut, you know, worry about that crowned mm -hmm. layer. It levels right. it out and it gives you a wonderful mile high pineapple coconut cake. <laughs> right, guys? So if you liked our video today, you know, give us a like, a share, a comment. Send your grandma over. She might remember making one back in the day. <laughs> right before the Frank Sinatra concert. Oh, man, if only. <laughs> That's all that would top this, right? <laughs> and I wanted to share and mention that 
Not only uh, did I want to do a special cake for Easter, but it's our anniversary too. 20 years, I told them, my trophy is in the mail. Oh my goodness. Still waiting. Please. I get the trophy. <laughs> but we're going to do a close-up on our anniversary bands. Now, I knew I was getting her one, but I didn't know she was getting me one. And she got me one in emeralds, like my birthstone. Hers is what you call a forever ring because the diamonds go all the way around the ring. Thanks guys. We got some coconut cake to eat.